guys, welcome to TTS 101 with your host, Ed Watts. So we've recently had a few requests for TTS, a guide to TTS. So this is what I'm going to hear, what I'm going to be doing today. So a bit of an introduction to TTS. So obviously practice games are fantastic, good being at the table, nothing else like it. But sometimes you've got some friends who are in your team or uh, someone who you'd really like to play who's quite far away. Now TTS is a very useful tool for doing deployments, you know, seeing seeing how an army does before you take it to say a tournament or seeing how certain interactions may work or just to simply see if you can fit it on the table. <laughs> so this is what we're going to be covering. So we're going to be covering um, how to use it, how to set it up. So with map packs and models and all that sort of thing. Then we're going to go into the interactions with how to use TTS, certain hotkeys that you can use for little tools that you can do um, and tricks and tricks that might make things a little bit easier that I wish I knew when I started. Because TTS is a bit of a daunting task at first, but when you actually get into it and get used to it and you're part of a community of which that helps, then you're great. You do fine. So this is what we're going to be doing today. And uh, we're going to go on to the first section. So the first section is going to be how to set up your uh, competitive terrain pack. So that's going to be how you get a board first and actually be able to manage it um, and where you find it. So we're going to go into a few things like on the Steam Workshop, on um, uh, uh, various things you can get models from. There's various places you can get models from, by the way. I'm just going to cover a couple of them um, and how, where I get my models from. And uh, yeah, we'll go on to it. So let's go. OK, so you've downloaded Tabletop Simulator. This is the first step. So you go on Steam, you, you get it, you've downloaded it. And now you need to have your board, and your terrain. And your models these are the first things you need so we're going to start off with where you find the stuff so you go onto steam as you normally would you go onto the community page go down to workshop and there's lots of stuff for tabletop simulator that you can use um, now you want to search the workshop for tabletop simulator just type it in it'll come up pretty quickly probably if you've got it downloaded that search okay so you find your tabletop simulator um search workshop browse all workshop and then tabletop simulator click that and then we click so that's now we are into tabletop simulator so once you've entered the workshop page of tabletop simulator now you can start searching for the things you need. So this is the first one that's very useful. This is like an FTC competitive layout. So this is going to have all of your secondaries. This is going to have how you score. This is going to give you a template of how to load in terrain and something to put your models on whilst you're playing. So this is FTC competitive. Search that exactly as it is. And search. OK. Now, this is the one I've downloaded. As you can see, mine is already downloaded. So all you have to do is click the plus and it'll download it into Tabletop Simulator. This will go into your saved loads, which I'm going to show you how to do later on. But for now, all you have to do is say, for instance, a plus there. It'll be the exact same on the other one. And then you click the plus. That's how you get your FTC competitive. Next, you're going to need to have some terrain. So there's various terrain sets you can get. So we're going to search for uh, WTC terrain just search that there's going to be various ones you can get and as you can see there's a fair there's various examples you can get here um as for today's example i'm going to get dawn of war onslaught wtc which you're going to click there and it will be downloaded and that will automatically go to your tabletop simulator and then lastly you're going to need to have a source for all of your models you're going to need to have force org so force org is one of the things that we use to um, you know, get all of the models that you need and it generates the models so you can basically create like um, uh, saves for the armies that you want to create. So the link in the, the link for this will be in the description of the YouTube video, which will just be underneath. Now, the reason why I can't like show you it is because it's very difficult to like find it in Steam, but the link just takes you straight there. So rather than having any problems, this is just it. So let me click on subscribe. 
assignment is going to subscriptions. Some games require you to relaunch the item, which is fine. Basically, when you when you open it, it should be okay. So on to the next bit, we're going to be going on to how to open how to open Tabletop Simulator, how to approach opening a game and starting a game, and then we'll go on to that. So now and next. Okay, so you've downloaded a, ter a map, a ter a terrain set, your um, model set, and uh, your FTC competitive base. Now, those are the three of the main steps that you need to carry on with this. So first of all, I'm going to show you how to use, um, you're going to single player. First, I'm going to show you how to use Force Org. So if you go into the workshop, Force Org will be the first thing that turns up if it's the last thing you downloaded. So you click on Force Org and load. May take a second. This is a rather large, expansive uh, selection. And once this is loaded, you're going to see everything that's available. So as you can see, there are lots of uh, factions on the left and factions up top and factions to the right. So for my example today, I'm going to be getting out a, we'll go for an ultramarine army. So you click on ultramarines, just there, low models. And boom, it'll take a second. And as, as I say, this can take a while sometimes, especially with the Space Marine selection. Probably should have posted a smaller one, but we're going to go into some examples. So as you can say here, you have your Dreadnoughts. So we've got Brutalis Dreadnought, Redemptor Dreadnought. And if you hover over, it'll actually say like what weapons it can have as well. So you can actually select the models that have the weapons that it has to make sure it's an accurate profile for your gaming. Um, and as I say, this slowly loads, loads up. You've got 640 items. And if you go down here, you can see that we have some tactical marines, which uh, are there. And uh, you can basically, at this point, you can build your army. So for example, uh, for the example we're going to do today, I'm going to build a, a small force with a Redemptor Dreadnought, which you can just click and drag over here. We're going to have a, a company champion leading it today. And then a primary champion on bike. And when you actually create your units for, say, for instance, tactical marines or whatever you're trying to make, it basically tells you what you have. So if I want a tactical squad, it's going to give you, um, I'm gonna, I want a tactical marine with a bolter. I want, so I want seven tactical marines with bolters. To do that, you highlight it by clicking and dragging. Control C and then Control V as many times as you want it. I want six of those. Because I want six of those as well as the one I already have. And then I have a flamer in there. And the other one I want is a big gun. So I'm going to have a heavy bolter. And then I want a sergeant. So I'm going to go with a sergeant with a power fist. Nice and standard. And once you've highlighted them all, you highlight it all together, hold it. And then one will put you into a one rank. Two, if you click the hotkey, will go into a two rank. That's how I prefer to keep mine. So if we click, you can click and drag this wherever, wherever you need it to go. So for example, I'm going to put it over here next to my little force I'm creating. You, and then you can copy entire squads in the same way. Control C, Control V, and can Control C, Control V. So at that point, you have your squads that you need. Okay, and then we're going. Uh, then after that, you can put whatever you want in this. At this point, you can basically create your Space Marine army based off of the list that you have, with all of the intricacies and everything like that. But for now, we're going to use this for the example of showing you how this works. And next, we're going to uh, save this. So to save this, you're going to highlight the entire army that you're using. You're going to right click it, and then you're going to save object. You click save object, it'll come up with a, a thing you want to name it. But now I'm going to call this um, TTS 101 Ultramarines. And then obviously you can name this whatever you, your army is going to be. So you can name it even the list that you have on the Warhammer app. So you have it even easier to track which list you're using at any time. And then you save. Okay, now that we've saved that, we can now go back into the original um, like menu. So you click on the menu at the top and then main menu and then click yes. And then it'll pull it back out. So now I have an, I have an army, I have terrain sets, which I've downloaded. I have the FTC competitive set, which is going to be the board that you're going to be playing on, which you can add the terrain to. I now have an army. And now we're going to go on to actually getting into TTS and using it. So for this, you're going to click on create. Now, if you want to play multiplayer, you click multiplayer and then however many you want to use and put a server name, a server password, and then people can join that. But for now, I'm going to create. I'm going to make a single player one. 
And then first of all, you're going to load the FTC competitive 40K map base, which we downloaded first, which is the 10th edition base. So you're going to click on that and we're going to load it. And there we go. So again, this can take a little bit of time, um, probably taking me a little bit more time because I'm sharing the screen to show you guys. Um, but effectively, when this loads in, it'll give you a base for everything you can load onto. So, uh, and then if we go up to here, once it's all loaded in, lovely, we can go into what we're going to. So another application of TTS is um, sort of knowing what you're going to be able to hide where on a terrain set. So if you've got an army in UKTC, which might be limited terrain, you could actually look at where you can hide things or how far you are off from the objective to be able to advance onto that objective to either do an action or move on to it to do an action. And uh, yeah, that's another application. So here you're gonna be able to select red or blue player. Single player doesn't really matter, but then when you're playing someone and create your own server, you've obviously both need to pick different colors. Then you wanna click on confirm for gaming and suddenly we have this. So. Next, we're going to be clicking on uh, 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 games again. And then now we're going to want to load in a terrain set. So as you can see, the Dawn of War on slot WTC, which is something I, added, I loaded earlier. You are going to click on the three little dots and then you're going to click on additive load. Now this is going to load the terrain set over the top of your already there base. And you're going to have a terrain set there already. And uh, that's, that's how you get your terrain set. And now we're going to load in our army. I am red, so I'm going to go over to the side. And then we're going to go with uh, games, sorry, objects, and then saved objects. And then it should be right at the bottom because it's TTS. So we'll say um, TTS 101 Ultramarines. And there's your army. Sometimes it turns up the other way around, but that's fine. You, if you want to like pivot something, you highlight it, you hold it, and you hit Q or E, whichever way you want to turn it. And that will rotate a model, whichever way you want it to be. And there we go. Next, we're going to be going on to um, how to uh, yeah, next. And then hit, on this terrain set, we've got a few pieces of extra terrain. If you ever wanted to get rid of terrain, you can always um, effectively go onto toggles, unlock it, and then suddenly you can move it around or just simply delete it. So you can get rid of it like so. So that's how you get rid of extra terrain pieces that you don't really need because the, the WTC terrain sets sometimes come with um, like extra terrain pieces because you've obviously got a larger set that you can use. And uh, yeah, so you can go ahead and delete those. And then over here on the FTC map pack, you have select deployment zones. So here you have the options. This is obviously designed for Dawn of War. So you've got Hammer Anvil, Dawn of War, and then when you actually load them in, it'll load up your objectives where they're meant to be and your deployment zones. Now, obviously, we've, we're waiting on new that we're actually getting new deployment zones and um, an entirely new pack. So this is that that obviously we want to look at later on. But this is the foundation of what you're going to be using. Um, and then we're going to be going on to uh, the, ne the next thing is going to be the tactical secondaries. So I'll be back with you in a sec. OK, so. The next bit is going to be going to show you because we've got we've got our terrain. I chose a slightly easier terrain set so you can see where the models will be deploying and stuff. Um, so we've got our terrain on the board. We've got our objectives on the board. Currently, this is hammer and anvil, and we've got our five objectives, which you can select again using over here to select your deployment zones. Next, I'm going to show you how to lock in secondaries. Now, these turn up these two little cards. You need to turn these over using F to flip something. You can just click F and it will flip. And then you know, right click lock in secondaries. Oh, sorry, we need to flip these again, apparently. And then we're going to click lock in secondaries. And then all your cards go top here with your deck, which then you should have 16 card cards. Now here, if you want to get rid of cards, which you discard, you just click those, click the X, and then they go back into the pile. Now, for example, if, if it's your first turn and you draw two secondary cards, you get engaged in all fronts and capture the outpost. Oh no, it's capturing the outpost, we don't want that. So let's say, for instance, you just try and spend a CP to discard this. You would, you would click the X, and then you would draw again. And then you get your, your other um, secondary instead. Now, if you ever pick up a card that you you know you get you shouldn't have picked up, you highlight it, flip it, click and hold it, put it back in the deck, and it will automatically do it. And if you ever need to reshuffle it, just click shuffle. So you right-click it and then click shuffle. Okay, so you have, let's say you've deployed your army, you've got your um, models on the line, 
And then we have, now we're going to go on to some rolling some dice. So effectively, if you ever want to delete dice, you simply use the delete button. You can always delete it. So if you want to, when you actually select dice, let's say, for instance, I have 20 bolt shots to roll. Here, these buttons here will give you an amount of dice equals what it says. So if I want to roll 20 shots, I will click 10 and then 10 and I'll let you roll it. So now here at the bottom left, we'll tell you the amount of dice that you actually have in the pool. So this makes it quite easy for selectors to seeing how many wounds you do to something. Let's say I'm firing bolt guns into termagants. Hit on threes. And then here, you have two buttons. If you want to re-roll anything, so let's say, for instance, you have oath, so you full re-rolls, you would right-click on the white, uh, on the white tag here where it says roll, and it will re-roll everything underneath. So that will be your re-rolls. This will look like there are dice on top. That is fine. No worries. It's the dice that you've rolled. And then if you then to get rid of any dice in the line that you have, you can either pick it up and move it or simply just click the red button on the line that you do. Or if you right click the one underneath, it'll get rid of everything underneath. So these would be all your hits from our, uh, hits from the roll. And then your threes to wound gaunts. And then you would right click the red button and it'll get rid of anything that you haven't rolled, which isn't a three plus. And then it'll say in the bottom left how many wounds you've done. Now, in your bottom left-hand corner next to your dice pool, you can see what your opponent is rolling. So, so if your opponent comes over here, so this is imagine this is your opponent and he's sat here about to roll this dice, he would see that you've got 15 saves. So he needs to get 15 dice, uh, which is actually nice and easy because it's simply five and or ten and five. And then he'd roll his dice with five ups. And then you would get no, but you don't want to get rid of everything underneath. So if you just normal click that, it'll get rid of those. Not right click because it'll get rid of them all. And then it'll come up with 12 failed saves. So that'd be 12 dead gaunts that interaction. Now, let's say, for instance, you need to roll um, like damage two on a feel no pain. So you've rolled some saves. Let's say you have five failed saves. You now have five saves and they're all damage two. So, uh, but you've got uh, a four at feel no pain because you're arco flagellants. Now, if you want to represent this, you highlight the amount of saves that you've failed or how many wounds you need to take, copy and paste them. And then it will be 10 dice in the pool, which is effectively 10 damage rolls you'll need to roll. And then you would click in twos. And then it will show you what each individual roll will be. So effectively, this is an ordered roll in twos. So you can sort of see where your filner pains are. So for example, on a four plus filner pain, on a two wound darker flag, it'll take one wound, two dude, two, two, two. So it'll take one wound, two wounds. So one's dead. It'll pass those two. And then it's a fail one and a fail another one. So then from those five wounds, you'll have two arco flags instead, for example. If this was damage three, for example, and it's five wounds, you would get your five, you would copy and paste it three times, and then you would roll it in threes. And this example here, the Archiflag takes a wound, the Archiflag dies, the Archiflag's fine, the Archiflag dies because it takes three fails, and then the Archiflag dies because there's two fails. So that's an example how to roll this, um, roll uh, fill the pains in an amount of dice. Um, next, you, if you want to use, um, if you want to roll one at a time at any point, you can always, let's say you've got five dice, but you've got five saves to make. So you can always put them outside of the box and you can roll them one at a time by simply putting them in this little box here. So you can click that and you roll it. And let's say, for instance, you want a CPU reroll, you can reroll it again. And that's effectively it. So, you, and then that, that, you manage this by basically you could do you could do this for any one-offs that you might want to re-roll that you want to roll these one at a time to make sure that you know whether whether or not you want to use your command point and that's effectively dice like it, it's it's not much more complicated than that if you ever want to clear the mat let's say you've got a million dice that you don't want there you can always right click and it'll clear the mat for you any dice that just fall out of the tray you can simply highlight and delete and the same with this and um yeah that's pretty much it for dice uh, and, and the tricks you can do um, people sometimes do use dice for um, a wound marker. So if you ever want to do that, you can get your dice out. And let's say something's got three wounds left. You can click three on the hover of a dice, click three, and it'll change it. Let's say it takes a wound, change it to two. And you can do that across the board with wound markers, or you could actually do a note on the model, which I'll show you later on, which you can do as well. Okay, so that's effectively dice, guys. There's not much more to it than that when it comes to rolling dice. You've got your little uh, screen in the left that you can see your opponent's dice roll, so you don't have to be going back and forth, which is nice and easy, which we all love. And then uh, that's pretty much it. Next, I'm going to show you, basically, there's on the FTC 10th edition competitive terrain, there are various markers at the top. So let's say, for instance, there are buffs or something you can use. For this example we're going to use today, I'm going to show you the um, Battle Shocked, effectively. So Battle Shocked, if you ever need to take one, 
you can just take as many as you need out. And let's say a unit is battle shocked. You can put the battle shock token on the unit and to signify it's battle shocked. If a unit has fight first, for example, you have like a Judicar in a unit, you can always put the fight first um, token on the unit for your opponent to see if you're playing that sort of like very friendly game, which you can, you know, all that sort of thing. Or if there's a buff that gives you lethal hits, et cetera, et cetera, or sustained, there's various things here that you can, you know, use to signify that. Or if minus one to hit, you can put that from a Venom Throat unit. There's lots of visual aids here to help you to be able to, you know, play this game as, as easy as you can and, you know, as uh, fun for your opponent as you can as well. Okay, and now we're going to go on to scoring. So, uh, and the command point system in general. So here you have uh, who, who goes first. You can click and toggle, see, see who plays, who actually gets the first turn. But now I'm going to click me and then you right click. Oh, sorry, and then um, you start game. So what else is on me? Um, unfortunately, that says I won't be seated, but I'm going to show you this anyway. So effectively, at the start of the command phase, which is me here, uh, I get a CP, my opponent gets a CP, and then I've drawn my secondaries. So let's say at the end of the turn, I score three on engage and um, five, three on deploy teleport owner. I would kick three on uh, engage and uh, three on engage, uh, deploy teleport homer. Uh, Oh, not on primary. <laughs> so three on engage and three on deploy teleport homer, and your primary is on the left. So after you've finished them, um, you can basically unlock them and then put them into the discard pile or click X or whichever whichever one is easiest for you. Um, sometimes they do lock automatically. Don't worry if that happens. You simply just right click, toggles, lock, and then flip and then put it in the bin. Um, normally there's an X that turns up. Sometimes that doesn't work, work sometimes, but you can just do the exact same thing. Um, and then let's say for instance, I get 10 primary on turn. You can click 10 primary on my turn. And effectively you play through the entire game and you get a score at the end and you can monitor your score here. And uh, that's effectively how you use this. Whenever you use a CP, click you on command point down. If you have a discard card for a CP at the end of your turn, make sure to add it on because that doesn't happen automatically. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it for uh, the scoring. That's very self-explanatory, to be fair, um, and uh, it's quite it's quite easy to use. Okay, next we're going to go on to how to do some measurements. So, uh, right, be right back. So next we're going to show how to do some movements. So there's a few ways you can do this. For now, we're going to advance that tactical squad onto the objective. So first of all, if you want to measure how far you are from something, hover over the model, hold tab, and then move it out to where you need to go. So as you can see here, it looks like eight point, just over eight, effectively, which should be about right. Um, and it means that you would need a four inch advance to get on. So let's say, for instance, for this example, we roll a four magically so, or, um, or a three, three magically. So that means we get to move nine. So effectively here we can click and hold the entire unit and it will move it for you. And it will it'll say, you know, how far it goes. Um, but however, sometimes this can be awkward. So instead we can use one by one. Now this, this should automatically do this for you and just come up with the um, measuring tab. If you get the models from the one, the one that I mentioned earlier, which is uh, the uh, Hop Forge. Um, but if it doesn't, you can hold down tab and it will do it for you as well. So in this example, you can move these one at a time, or if it's just in a straight line, you can highlight the entire unit and move it into another direction. And if, if at any point you're holding this unit and you're like, oh no, I don't want to, I don't want to put it there, I don't want to put it there, just click Escape, and it will uh, exit it for you, and you can sit, put that unit back to where it is. This is obviously very useful. Um, and also, again, if you want to rotate anything, it's just Q or E. If you want to rotate, um, you know, a model or behind a wall or something, or, or rotate a gun behind a wall. And here is the same situation. Let's say, for instance, this guy needs to go behind the wall. If you ever want to figure out how to move a model past a wall, what you can always do or figure out how fast it's going to go, you can always copy and paste the model, put it directly over the top of the original model. That's an example. Like so. And now we have an example we can use. So um, effectively, you can move that model, you know, seven to there. And then we can move the model three. Let's say it moves 10 inches. And it basically means you can figure out how far you can go 
because you've copied and pasted it. And let's say, for instance, this isn't where you want to go because you have to make multiple movements because as soon as you let go, you can't escape back to where this is. So let's say that's not where you want to go. Then suddenly you can delete that or you can delete this. So let's say this is where we want to go. We can delete that and our movement's correct. So that's, that's, this is like uh, standard practices for how you can uh, utilize movement on TTS and show how these things go. And this is another example of to see where you can hide stuff. So as you can see here, you can actually see the firing lanes. If you ever want to make a line to see how fair the firing lane are, let's say you've got this lovely dreadnought that wants to shoot these tactical Marines, but they want to hide and be on the objective at the same time. So let's say it moves eight and it can shoot. So you basically put, you can click tab, so you can click, you can click as soon as it's there, like so, and it'll come up with a line. And then you can keep that where it is. And you can basically draw a line on that profile to see where it can shoot. And once you've got that line, if you're playing with your opponent, it's obviously very useful to get this done for you. You can basically get your opponent to hold that line for you. And then you simply just move your models behind that line. So you know exactly where that thing's going to be able to shoot. So it can't shoot you and the whole objective. So that's where you can use TTS for movement and how to get lines and all that sort of good stuff. If you ever want to draw a line, so let's say, for instance, um, you've got uh, an eight inch move here, um, and you want to draw a line, physically draw one, you can always actually physically draw a line here with a line here. And so you can tab from where it is, move it to here. Once you've got that, get a line, and then physically draw one. So once you've physically drawn one, you can actually basically use that to get your line um, whilst your opponent's uh, doing one over here. And you can effectively plan your movement out based off of what your opponent can see. So that's another way you can use that. And effectively, that's how you move, move models. And um, yeah, so again, another thing that can sometimes happen if you try and highlight models and move them over terrain, uh, sometimes it will go weird like this. And if you let them go, some models flip over and it's chaos. So if, you ever, if this ever happens to you, first of all, pick them up, click two, which will put all one to put them into a formation. And then each individual model that's flipped over, just click F and it'll come back over and suddenly you're fine. Or if you're still holding onto them like so, then just click escape and it'll put them back to where they were. So yeah, that's movement shenanigans on um, TTS. And we'll go on to the next bit, guys. Let's go. Okay, next we're gonna go on to uh, a few things you can do for secondaries. So let's say for instance, you draw investigate signals. Um, you can click on the button, show investigate signals which is just here. And then it will turn up with all of the corners exactly nine away from each of the uh, corners. Now, this is applicable to all the secondaries. So you, if I hide the investigate signals there again, let's say you want to put strap reserves onto the battlefield, you can click show the strap reserves and it will come up with the lines that you can come on. Now the red lines and the blue lines here show the enemy deployment zone, which obviously means that you can't come on it from turn uh, on the second turn. Um, and that's effectively all that's there for. But apart from that, it will show you exactly where all of your lines are for strategic reserves. And another one it can do is show engage. So it will show you the little cross in between, and that means the areas that you can get engaged, so you'll be able to see if it's possible. So let's say this guy is here, and we want to move him in for engage. We can click on and then move him over, and let, with his age movement, oh, look, he can make it amazing. And effectively, you can do that with any unit, so you can get them into positions and uh, see and make sure you see if it's possible, which is obviously very good because it's very accurate. Um, and then we're going to show, and then area denial is another example that will show you the middle, which also works for uh, deploy as well. So basically, the areas, a mini area denial is a small circle, big area denial is the bigger circle. Obviously, deploy is the same as big area denial because it's within six of the center of the battlefield. And those are the buttons that you can use here. Um, if you ever want to change the change turn on the next command phase, you right click. And it moves on to the next command phase, obviously, to your opponent. Um, another thing I didn't mention earlier, which I'm going to go through here, uh, this is on each side. This is like my red, my red side, effectively. This can show your reserves at the start of the game. So actual reserves, like deep strike, things in transports, transport one, transport two, transport three. Let's say you have three impulses. You can actually label them like so. So this tactical squad, we can right click, and it, you'll see tactical squad flamer. So let's say we want to name this um, tactical squad marine. So, um, Unit one, transport. So you can put, you can name the unit that, you can uh, color tint it if you really want to as well, and it will go into the transport one. And let's say you have a, let's say th this is your transport. You can highlight it, right click, and you can physically change the name to uh, transport one. 
And that means you can have basically a direct correlation between the units that are on the battlefield and your reserves to make it very clear for you and your opponent to play a very lovely, friendly game. And you've got your reserves bit, which might be your deep strikes, and your strategic reserves, which you can put units in strategic reserve to show your opponent where they are. And um, yeah, that's that's the that's the crux of this board and how to change over command phases and all that sort of thing. And we're going to go on to color tinting models now. So uh, effectively, color tinting models is something you can use to mark out different units or um, maybe like you've got you've got like an enhancement on a model or you've got 20 units of orc boys, six, six units of orc boys that you need to separate into their 20s. And this is very applicable to pretty much any of the models on Force Org. So to do this, uh, we're going to use this example for three redemptive dreadnoughts. So the first one, we're going to try and do this. So you basically highlight the dreadnought, you right click, go down to color tint, click on color tint, and then it'll give you a variation of colors you can go for. This one, I'm going to go for light blue. So we're going to click apply. And then that one will get uh, turn blue. And if we do the same here, we go color tint. And let's say we go for green, apply. That one is green. And then let's say this one we want to make red. Do the same thing, color tint. Go up to red, go on red, and then click apply. And now you have three dreadnoughts that are separately colored. You can do this for tactical squads. You can do this for orc boys. You could do this for pretty much anything you wanted to separate for uh, ease of you know visually looking it on the table. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. And there we have it, guys. That is your basic rundown of TTS. So there's lots of little tricks and stuff there that you can use to make your game a lot more, a lot easier to play. Um, the great thing about the um, model selection that you have there, which is the ones I downloaded today, is they they look great. So you don't have the little you know cardboard, the cartoony look. Effectively, um, a lot of them all have the automatic measuring for your, for your models, which is also fantastic. And yeah, that's everything I can think of for today. Any questions or um, you know anything you might might have thought that I've missed, then drop it on a comment down below. Uh, we always love to see it. Um, I've been only been using TTS myself for four or five months, but something like this is obviously very useful for someone who's trying to get into the TTS or trying to get into the hobby. And I've tried to be as comprehensive as I possibly can. But any tricks and stuff, feel free to comment down below for um, other TTS players out there trying to learn and trying to grow the community. Um, but yeah. Uh, Ed from Six Plus Plus signing off. Great, uh, you know, fantastic to make this video, and I hope you guys enjoy it. See you later, guys.